What's up, Internet? This is Ramblin' Josh, and you're watching another episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy X. Today, we keep trying to find Yuna. Hopefully, she is in the, the temple the in uh, Bevel here. I wonder if Yuni's really in there. Well, there's Let's only one see. way to find out. Let's go. But before we do that, we want to pick up this Albed primer here. It's blended into the floor really well here, but uh, I'm pretty sure that if you don't get it right now, uh, you can't get it ever again. Hit up the save sphere. And now for the Cloister of Trials. Now this place isn't particularly like hard or confusing, but it can be a little disorienting and there's a lot of kind of going back and forth. But we are going to solve it. So the whole idea here is by pushing a pedestal with a Bavel sphere onto this little track, we can get on like a little elevator thingy. And these glyphs will control what direction the elevator can go in. So to start off with, at this first glyph, we want to go down the right. This leads us down to a little lower path, but at the moment, the only direction we can go is forward. To go even lower. thing down here is a, another Bevel Sphere. So we'll grab that and push the pedestal back onto the path. And now we ride it back up with a really odd like diagonal perspective and take this glyph back up to the upper path now we want to go forward forward and no that's wrong use this thingy at the end to turn around or you could just go off the end and you start at the beginning again we want to take this direction this is uh, if you're facing forward like you're going down the path uh, naturally this is the stop on the right put the Bevel sphere in there and that activates a section of the path and if we push this back on the path Now we want to. Okay, I missed the the turnaround here. But it's just as well. We just start again at the beginning of this little upper path here. Now this time at this intersection, I want to take the other side. Grab this bevel sphere. this back onto the path again. And now I want to go back to the start of the upper path here. Either by taking the turn around or just going off the end. This time I want to go right again to go down to the lower path. This time you can see the glyph here is pointing in multiple directions. And I just went back up, didn't I? 
Yes, I did. Well, isn't that dandy? down to the lower path and now go left okay and I want to go to the very last cliff and turn right Slap this thing in here. It makes a little bridge appear, but we can't do anything with that quite yet. So just shove this thing back on the path again, and we ride off the edge, which brings us back to the start of the lower path, just like on the upper path. time we want to go to the second cliff. And I missed it. For whatever reason you when you start from the end uh, the or, uh, the start of this path, you're really going really fast. So it's quite possible that you just soar right past your glyph before the arrow has a chance to line up properly. At the end of this little corridor, there's a glyph sphere. So we want to grab that. And... Back on the road again. We want to take this back into the last slot here. Where we uh, just built that little bridge. And insert the glyph sphere in this little. whatever. And that uh, unveils a destruction sphere for us. Alright. Let's see. Let's put the destruction sphere in the pedestal. Grab the Bavel Sphere. Actually, I, I probably want to do that the other way around, don't I? even do it the other way around? I guess not. Oh well. Sorry for wasting 20 seconds of your time. Back on the path. Go off the edge. Once again, we are going for the second cliff. The easiest way to try and uh, use these glyphs on the lower path, since they're either pointing forward or to the right, um, I find is just to try and hammer the X button when you're going over the glyph. It usually works better than trying to actually time it, I find but your mileage may vary. Anyways, take this destruction sphere we got, slap it in there, and that does whatever to that 
path. Unlike in other cloisters of trials, um, you actually have to do stuff with the destruction sphere to get out of here. But, to actually get the fancy treasure, instead what we have to do is come back to this uh, last intersection and pick up this Bevel Sphere. Bridge disappears, but we don't need it anymore. And back on to the lower path for the last time. And finally, we want to use the very first glyph on this path. Well, after the top one there. That brings us to this little midpoint here. We just want to push the pedestal right onto the other end. There's only one way for us to go here. And it's straight to the glyph that we like supercharged or whatever with the destruction sphere. And that sends us up a little ramp here and we end up up here. Uh, don't do anything with the pedestal right yet. Uh, we want to put the Bevel Sphere in this little alcove. That kind of activates this path up here. Hit up this treasure chest. And that activates a little uh, glowing floor step, or uh, floor switch. Brings the pedestal up here. And since we got another Bevel Sphere, we can push the pedestal onto this path and ride this path to the end. And here we get a Night Slance for Kamari. You automatically just ride it straight back. And let's throw this thing on Kamari. It's pretty nifty. 8% uh, extra strength over the uh, Hunter Sphere I was using. Not too shabby. And that's the end of the Cloister of Trials here. Uh, walking to the right here ends the Cloister. So with that, uh, I'll leave you here for today. Let's play Final Fantasy X. Catch you next time.